Um, so my name's Jamie Setz. Um, I'm a glacial geologist here at the Antarctic Research Center. Um, I'm also helping helping Georgia run this thing called the Wellington Branch of the Antarctic Society. Um, and yeah, so um, I finished my PhD about um, about a year and a half ago, uh, and working as a postdoc now, still playing around with rocks that I. I picked up just back here over my shoulder. Um, and yeah, uh, back in May, uh, we had this really incredible offer uh, come from uh, from Brett, uh, fathering him with, with the Navy, um, basically for a, um, uh, a couple of us to, to come uh, check out the new, the new boat, the, the Aotearoa. Um, and I'll just, just get the... Uh, get the talk up so we can start looking at something other than my face. Um, yeah, so we had this really incredible opportunity to um, go and check out this new boat, which um, has really incredible capabilities, uh, really wide ranging. Um, I'm not going to touch on any of them other than the fact that it's going to Antarctica and we'll be helping um, you know, to keep an eye on the, the marine protected area as well as uh, resupply uh, some of the bases down there, Scott Base, Murdo. And so, yeah, basically uh, what I'm going to do today is just give you an overview of what that little, um, that, that wonderful day where we just kind of popped onto the boat um, and then a nice lovely surprise that came on after. Um, so yeah, so back in early May, a handful of us with the Antarctic Society um, got this opportunity to go right up onto the, onto the ship uh, while it was docked here at uh, Wellington Harbor. Uh, and there's um, Carol, Natalie and I, Georgia taking the photo. It was a cracker day, um, pretty amazing. Got uh, really up close and personal on this thing. So, um, Basically, this is a resupply ship, so that's for a lot of things, but fuel has been one of them, uh, water being another. Uh, so a lot of these pipes and, and whatnot are um, related to, to kind of fuel transfers from one ship to another. Uh, I do invite you all to, to look up some, uh, some of the Defense Forces videos on this thing. Um, there's even one of a, an active resupply. Um, Pretty amazing. Here we are, uh, pretty chuffed to be up on the deck. Uh, I kind of fell in love with these, um, these this compass here. Um, but yeah, uh, lovely day and really fun to get up close and personal with this thing. Um, we we got to go into the, um, the kind of um, emergency ship, um, kind of the best way to get to see one of these things. Um, yeah, and so looking inside, it's uh, it's pretty tight. They tell us about a hundred can fit in here. Um, for anybody that's taken the um, Hercules uh, C-130 down to Antarctica, I think it's going to be a lot tighter than that, um, and uh, absolutely no privacy. So uh, you know the uh, the toilets there uh, for you as well. So uh, a good thing to have on board. Uh, you know the whole emergency ship scenario, but. Um, yeah, quite an interesting experience. So um, yeah, the tour for us lasted for about an hour or so, um, but Brett offered um, the society one seat to join the, join the crew and the ship um, back to Devonport up in Auckland. And somehow I got lucky enough to, to be that person. Um, so I took it on, I was visitor number seven. Um, and yeah, so we, um, we got our onboarding. So this is the briefing room. Uh, it's a, a nice, nice opportunity just to get your, your bearings about you um, and you know, get an idea where you're gonna be sleeping the next few days. Um, this is the officer's quarters, officer's mess. So um, we were treated as officers. It was quite a, quite a luxurious experience. So uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner all back here. Some, some chilling out here. Uh, there's a coffee machine back in there. So yeah, all quite comfortable as we uh, rocked around New Zealand. And then I just hit on a couple of uh, pretty amazing experiences just over the, over the couple of days that, um, that, that we were on the boat. So uh, straight away, as we left Wellington, they, um, 
they they took this um, this dummy here in the high vis and chucked it overboard and did a you know person overboard um, drill, and so this fellow here is uh, pointing. Uh, they've got two folks on either side of the boat pointing at the the person overboard, and then the boat here uh, is actually going out to get them. Meanwhile, the the whole ship is doing a pirouette in the in the harbor. So uh, a really amazing experience to be a part of and. And this is kind of the, the coolest part for me. So you can see the job well done, you know, got the, the character that was flung overboard and uh, these rib boats, they just, they just launch them over the side, crank up the motor and, and you know, get out and make it happen. It's uh, really amazing. So this is just lifting it back up onto the, back up onto the ship, all from uh, all seen kind of from the comfort of the, of the deck. And uh, in map view, um, this is what that nice little pirouette looked like. So traveling along, leaving the port, and little 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 donut, and uh, back on track. So uh, from what I remember, the the captain said that somebody in the defense house was like, "Hey, did you forget something? What's what's going on?" Um, so yeah, as we rounded the corner and kind of split out of town, uh, got a nice little rainbow and good little sunny day. Uh, little sunset was was pretty fun. So uh, normally the uh, the route would be around the the east side, but we had quite a quite a swell on that day. Uh, I don't think as bad as today, but um, anyways, the uh, captain made the call to go around the west coast, um, and yeah, so it meant for a little longer travel. Uh, but the really cool thing is, as we went around Cape Ranga, it was uh, it was blood mood night. So. Uh, basically all hands on deck to uh, stare at the sky and watch the moon turn red. Um, so that was uh, that was pretty amazing. And then once we uh, turned around the corners when we got those, we got finally got those swells and um, yeah, I got my sea legs. So this um, just a video of us uh, cruising along. Uh, so this this boat is uh, she's pretty wide. Um, uh, but yeah, it was quite fun to hang out on the back end and and just kind of watch us sail through. So this is as we're heading around the, the west coast of the North Island. And yeah, there was some uh, there was some watching the sea. There was some um, reading, some hanging out, uh, kind of reminded me of downtime in Antarctica. Uh, but the other cool thing that um, I managed to, to pull out was a um, uh, give a science talk. So. Like I said, I'm a glacial geologist. I try to reconstruct the ice sheet through time using glacial erratics, glacial debris. Um, and so I got to tell that story. Um, and it looks like uh, nobody here, this is just before the, the fun started, but uh, this was put on the, uh, the daily orders. Uh, all welcome. And we ended up having a, a packed house, even with a couple standing off to the side. So a really, really amazing experience for me and, and probably one of the more engaging um, post talk comp, um, discussion of, I've ever been a part of. Um, really wide range, but really interested. Um, pretty much everybody in the, in the chat were late to the, uh, to, the next, um, to the next thing on, the, on the, um, the list for the day. But one thing that I did do while I was there wearing the Antarctica or the New Zealand Antarctic Society hat uh, was basically just to kind of scratch the surface of, hey, what's what's actually the possibility of doing science on this thing? It's going down to the air, to the ice every year. There's a little bit of a history with its predecessor, the Endeavor. Um, so yeah, let's start a conversation. And so so what I did was basically laid out, you know, hey, what what can we do uh, together during missions and. You know, this was a little bit of help from uh, from Brett and also from from Robin, um, just kind of laying out a few ideas um, based on some of the history. And so, what was before I get started here? What was the way I set this out and the way I prompted them was we're just going to get crazier as we go down the list. So I'm just going to put things on the table and we can talk about them. So the the kind of the simplest thing is let's put some instrumentation on this thing, so we can measure the atmosphere or the ocean or or even shoot things up into space, and that could be a tech putting putting something on board, and you know, no no other personnel joining joining the team. You could train up uh, marine observers to you know identify uh, bird and marine life, uh, marine mammals, and sea ice uh, observations. 
Um, we can put, you know, we can tow sensors, we can put geophysical sensors on there, the, the bathymetry system on there. Uh, so a lot of this stuff we can, we can do as well. And then we start getting a little crazier. So um, one, one kind of severe limitation of uh, Antarctic New Zealand science uh, is the lack of helicopters um, uh, you know, uh, from, from the marine realm. So we've got helicopters at Scott Base and they're limited. They can't fly over open water. But in this case, there's a helicopter pad on the back of this uh, boat and bring a couple of helicopters, maybe we can get to some places that are pretty tough to get to. And then maybe we can have Antarctic science as an objective. So maybe this could, this whole boat could be a, a platform for integrated missions. And, you know, that, that could be years away, but definitely something we should have on the table. So uh, this prompted a really great discussion. Like I said, it was probably one of the highlights of my scientific career to be an early career anyways, that, uh, to have such an engaged audience and, and the potential to, uh, to do new things uh, or at least facilitate them. It's really, really exciting and uh, a really captive audience as well. So we, we um, yeah, that was basically the story um, of, the, of the trip. And we just kind of docked back here in Devonport. Uh, pretty amazing little experience. Um, we actually spun around the Horaki Gulf for about 36 hours waiting on tugs and tides to bring us on in, but that's all right. It was nice and chill. Uh, so once we got into Devonport, I basically, uh, it was actually a little awkward. Nobody actually told us when we could get off or um, yeah, what to do. So finally, after, uh, after you start seeing, you know, nobody around, it was like, oh, well, let's get out of here. So I, I grabbed a couple of photos. Uh, I really kind of fell in love with a few different um, Kind of industrial art type things. Uh, I really love these doors on these boats. Um, the, just the the locking mechanism. I was just enthralled with. So um, yeah, and then just like just kind of reflective. You know, it, was, uh, it kind of reminded me of leaving the mountains. It's always quite hard uh, to have the mountains at your back. I'm always kind of turning around and watching it, watching the mountains, <laughs> and uh, leaving the ship. Kind of felt something like that as well. And and as I took the ferry from Devonport over to to Auckland City, um, you know, I felt uh, felt a little distant, but also quite connected to the to the the massive boat that's that's hanging over here, um, yeah, next to the city. So I think that's enough for the uh, for the Aotearoa. I don't know if we've uh, if we've got time for questions there or oh, there, yeah, hey, hey, you Brad, good to see you. Sorry, sorry for the technical challenges. We just cracked right into it. Um, I don't know if you, uh, we, we thought maybe we'd just do a flipperoo, so I got to start it if, if you want to um, add anything to that or. Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks, Jamie. A uh, great presentation and um, really great that you were able to participate in that uh, trip up the coast and get a little bit of time in, on uh, Aotearoa. Uh, look, it's an exciting time for Antarctica uh, from my point of view, and I think, I hope, I should say, for the Antarctic Society. Um, yeah, from the mid 50s to early, oh, I think 1971 or maybe 72, New Zealand had uh, the two endeavors um, for Antarctic operations. And let's be clear, AATRO is not dedicated for Antarctic operations. However, it is fully polar code compliant and specifically designed to operate in Antarctica. So it takes it up a, up a whole new level and um, while you could argue the ones we had previously the endeavors in the 50s through the 70s were not particularly well designed for Antarctic um, operations they were certainly um, allocated for that purpose so we've we've now got at least back to those days and arguably even further ahead than back then a very capable ship uh, currently only intended to go to Antarctica for resupply once every two years. That could change over time, but that's the current plan. And it's our uh, first trip to Antarctica is planned for February 22. So only several months away from now. Um, it's gonna be um, a fairly straightforward trip in the sense it's testing its systems. It's not gonna go down there and do a lot of uh, additional stuff. It's, 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 it's going down there, testing 
um, to make sure it's up to standard and, and they go through a whole bunch of capability checks and part of that will be to undertake uh, some fueling uh, operation in McMurdo. But it's not what I'd call a fuel, a full fueling operation. It's mainly just to make sure all the things that they have work effectively. Um, look, I hope that in the, uh, the, the um, Aotearoa is used for uh, science. It is used for Antarctic uh, logistic support. And it is used to further promote Antarctic interests across this country. And so what Jamie has done is just a taste of that. Uh, he's prodded things along, which is good to see. And um, I'm really pleased that that's uh, off to a good start. And so I would encourage um, you know, members of the society when they get the opportunity to truck on down to Aotearoa. Uh, if it comes back to Wellington, we'll see if we can get another visit arranged. Um, it will, um, it will be back at some stage, I'm sure. Um, and the other thing to note is that this is one of two vessels that are intended. The other one being the um, Southern Ocean Patrol vessel. Um, that's still in the planning stages. Um, uh, like a lot of other things at the moment, there's a bit of a financial imperative due to COVID related expenditure and so on. So yeah, that might not be quite the time frame that we thought um, a year or so ago, um, but it's still on the cards. And again, that's something I think the society is in a good position to advocate for. Uh, in particular, if that one eventuates, you've got something that is going to be dedicated to Antarctic uh, operations, Antarctic logistic support, Antarctic uh, environmental uh, support and Antarctic science support. Well, at least that's how I'd like to see it. That's probably enough for me. Uh, thanks for the chance to contribute. Cheers. Oh, thanks, Brett. And yeah, just from, from all of us again, thanks for so much for giving us the opportunity. Just just even the even the quick trip on on the you know from the uh, from the harbor there was <laughs> pretty amazing. Yeah, that was yeah, absolutely fantastic and, and so nice to kind of, I guess, after all these years of, of having you on the committee to, you know, be growing that relationship uh, with the Navy, super exciting.